وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا أرحم الراحمين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني ويفق قولي My dear, esteemed, and beloved, and beautiful, and handsome brothers and sisters in faith and Islam. All praises are definitely due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most high is He. The most honorable is He. And the most compassionate is He. And we send abundant blessings and salutations upon the seal of all prophets, upon the master of all messengers, the cream of creation, the rising star of Madinatul Munawwara, none other than Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. We ask and we beg and we beseech and we invoke Allah and Allah only that you make it easy for us and not to make it difficult. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high is he, to grant us all knowledge and grant us all understanding. Ameen thumma ameen. My dear esteem and revered gathering, one day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered his masjid. And he saw from his companions that they were remaining behind, meaning they were leaning and chilling out behind of the back of the masjid. The Prophet said, Taqaddimu, come forward. This was the remarks, this was the statement of the beloved of Allah, that when he entered his masjid, and this is the most beautiful of masjids, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam masjid, and he saw his companions, they were like you and I, they were remaining behind, they were delaying, you know, they was not in front, so then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, come forward, come front, come close to me. وَلَا يَزَالُ اللَّهِ That indeed the one who does not come forward تَأَخَّرَ اللَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep him behind. So my dear esteemed brothers, come forward insha'Allah. Come closer to me. This was not my words. This was the words of Rasulullah. So come forward insha'Allah. This is the methodology. This is the way of these gatherings. This is the way we show our utmost respect for the masjid. We don't come and lean up against the walls like the elderly people. If you are young and you're capable, come forward. No need to lean on the walls. Leave it for the older folks. They need it the most. If we come to these gatherings and we don't know the etiquette and the adab of these gatherings, I don't think we'll get the true benefit of the gathering. Because if this is gatherings is to show our utmost love and respect and honor and service at the one who brought this religion to us, then what is the benefit of the gathering? Our beloved Prophet says, what? For the one who remained behind, Allah will keep him in behind. And this is why our ummah is being lagged behind today. This is why our community our Muslim communities are being lagged behind today because we are not following and implementing the characteristic and the trait and the prophetic traditions what the Prophet Sallallahu left behind. With that being said, my dear esteemed and beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, you are about to hear the name Muhammad a lot. So therefore you need to send salutations upon him a lot. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, and everyone have heard this hadith many times before, that it be a reminder for myself foremost, that indeed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nas, that the most stingy, the most greedy person is the one ma that when my name is being mentioned, 
for Allah you salli alay and he does not send salutations and blessings and durood and peace upon me so if you start to hear the name Muhammad MashaAllah, now you're understanding the benefit of this gathering. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that oh, indeed, man salla alayya, sallallahu alayhi ashran. The one who sends salutations upon me once, Allah sent ten rewards, ten mercies, ten blessings upon that individual. So you're about to hear the name Muhammad a lot. So you have to say this a lot. And I will say this, inshallah, before I start my lecture. This is just the introduction. Sufyan Athurri, rahimullah, may Allah be pleased with him. And our righteous scholars, they will tell us this story, this narration. That one day Sufyan Athurri went for Hajj, the pilgrimage, like Haji Saab, he just went recently as well. And he had it, San Fernando Mashur was viewing it all the time, alhamdulillah. The whole Hajj he showed us. So Sufyan Athurli, he was one of the most profound scholars of his time. And he went for Hajj. And whilst he was circumambulating the Kaaba, which is known as Tawaf, whilst he was circumambulating the Kaaba, he noticed a young man, perhaps probably safe age or maybe older. And that man was saying, Allah masli ala Muhammad, Allah masli ala Muhammad, Allah masli ala Muhammad. Verbally, not as loud. So Sufi Athori recognized this and noticed this. So after the circumambulation, after the tawaf finished, he went up to this young lad, this young boy, and inquired and asked him that what was your reason why he was circumambulating doing tawaf around the Kaaba and saying, Allah masli ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whatever the rule at that time he was saying. So the young boy exclaimed and asked, why do you want to know this? Like any young boy nowadays. If you come to them and tell them you're performing salah wrong, boy, hey, why you, you, you to tell me this? He was like, this is normal. This is the way the young people are today. And even elderly too as well. Yeah? Don't, don't feel. So the young man said, who are you? Why you want to know this? So then he said, that, oh, indeed, I am Sufian Athari. So when he heard that he was Sufi and Athari, he himself became astonished. This was the great Sufi and Athari because this was the great and profound scholar. Today when you hear Mufti Mank, we flock to it. But yeah, Alhamdulillah, you hear Ishmael, no, flock, that's all right. All right, this is the reality. So Sufi and Athari, he said, that I am the Sufi and Athari. He said, you are the great scholar Sufi and Athari. He said, because of you, I will tell you why I do this. That indeed my father... He had intention of going for the Hajj. And he was a very sinful man. He was a drunkard. He, every single act since I became mature, since I know my father, he was a sinful person, a sinful individual. And indeed, he made the intent, he made the intention to go for the Hajj. So when we came for the Hajj, he became ill and he became sick and he died. And whilst while he was on the bed, whilst he was deceased, I looked at his face and I saw the most ugliest person I have could have seen in my entire life. I saw the darkness emulating from his face. So then because of that, I fainted. I fall into slumber. I fall into a faint sleep. And in my sleep, I saw in my dream that indeed a man came and passed his hands over my father's face. And indeed my father's face became glooming with light. For indeed when I saw this, I became amazed. So when I got up and I reached the person's hand who passed his hand over the face of my father, I grabbed his hand and I asked him, Man huwa? Who are you? Who is he? Faqala, that individual said, Ana Muhammad ibn Abdullah, that indeed I am Muhammad, son of Abdullah. Meaning he was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And for indeed, you must know the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man ra'ani fil manami, the one who sees me in a dream, for surely he has sees me, la yamathaluhu bi, for indeed shaitan cannot impersonate me. So indeed, this man, this boy, this young lad, 
saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his dream passing the hand over his father's face. And when he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, why did he do this? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam replied and said, for indeed your father was from my ummah. And indeed, even though your father was sinful, even though he was a drunkard, even though you may know him to do all of the illicit things, but your father, every single moment he had, whilst he was sober, he would send salutations upon me. He said, what? Every single moment whilst your father being the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for indeed he would send salutations upon me. And because of this, I passed my hand over his face. And his face became illuminated. And when this young boy woke from his dream, even then whilst his father was on the bed, dead, deceased, his face was illuminated thereafter. Remember at the beginning he saw his father's face? The most ugliest face, the most darkest of face. But when he awoke from his slumber, when he awoke from his dream, he saw his father's face radiant and illuminated. Why? Because he used to send salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear esteemed and beloved gathering, this is sufficient. This is sufficient. From this narration from Sufian authority, you can know the status and the precedence and the lofty position of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I will conclude with this. It's enough. What else you do you need? What else you want more? If you don't know from this dream, from this young boy, what else you and I desire? All of us desire to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our dreams. All of us want our face to be radiant when we pass away. It's true, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this hadith is recorded in Jamia Tirmizi, hadith number 3310. I may be mistaken with the number. Imam Tirmizi, rahimullah, he recorded a beautiful hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whereby the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Anna. Sayyidun Nas, that I am the master of all human beings. I am the master of all mankind. Khurujan, and I will be the first to exit the grave. So the first lofty precedence you see of Rasulullah is what? He is the first of all mankind. He is the first and the master of all mankind. The second precedence and lofty position you see in this hadith is that he will be the first to exit the grave, to exit the qabr on the day of judgment. When everyone else will be sent forth thereafter. And I will be the speaker when everyone comes to me. And indeed, my intercession will be first to be answered. And I am the master. Indeed, I will be the one who will intercede for them when they are hopeless. Jamio Tirmizi, hadith number 3310. Could be 3315. Can we search it? Google it now if you want. My dear esteemed, beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, from this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we understand his lofty position. We understand his lofty precedence. That indeed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be the master of creation. He will be the first one to exit the grave on the day of judgment. He will be the first one to speak to the people when they come forth. He will be the first one to intercede and his intercession will be firstly answered. And he will give glad tidings. He will give glad tidings to those who are hopeless. Like you and I. On that day of judgment, we don't know how we would be. We don't know if these nights of beautiful, of 12 nights of Rabbil Awwal, we don't know if this can be a means for our intercession. 
We don't know what will be our status on the day of judgment. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said what? وَإِذَا أَنَا Indeed, I will be glad tidings for the hopeless. In another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this hadith is recorded by Imam Bazar in his Musnad. Indeed, he has also authenticated it as being suhi, as being sound. That indeed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yajma Allahu nas fi sa'idin wahid la yatakallamun illa Allah bi idhnihi. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high is he, will gather everyone on one plane. And as you all know this, we're all mindful of this, that on the day of judgment, from the time of Adam alayhi salam until the end of creation, all of the people will be gathered on one plane. One spot, one place. لا يتكلم إلا الله بإذني. No one will be able to speak except Allah by His permission. And this is also mentioned in Quran in Surah An-Naba, chapter concerning the unseen news. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, لا يتكلمون إلا من أذن الرحمن. That indeed no one will be able to speak except by the permission, except by the will of the Most Merciful, of the Most Gracious. This is rooted in Quran too. It's not only the hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah will gather everyone on one plane. No one will be able to speak except by the permission, by the will of God Almighty, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For yuda'a, then a caller will call out. Someone will proclaim, Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The name of Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Will be called out first And foremost on the day of judgment When everyone will be gathered And then the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Continues and he says that oh, Indeed I will intercede first And my intercession will be accepted first Look at this Lofty precedence of our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high is he, he says in the holy Quran, he says, Kul, Allah Say, O oh my beloved Prophet Muhammad, that indeed would you take someone else as your guide? As your guardian other than Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Holy Quran, Qul, أَغَيْرَ اللَّهَ أَتَّخِدُ Would you take someone else as a guide and as someone, as a friend other than Allah? Then Allah continues and he says, فَاتِرِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ يُتْعِمُ وَلَا يُتْعَمُ He is the one, he is the originator, he is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is the one who provides, he is the one that feeds, but provision does not become to him. وَهُوَ يُتْعِمُ وَلَا يُتْعَمُ He is the one who provides for us. He is the one who sustains us. But sustenance is not for him. Provision is not for him. Kul, say, O oh Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that for an akuna aslama, or an akuna awwala aslama, for indeed I am the first one to submit. For indeed I am the first one to submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Allah's words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high is he, is saying that indeed our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the first person to submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Allah mentioned in another verse in the Quran, إِنَّا دِينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ Indeed, verily the religion in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Islam. So meaning all of the prophets, all of the people before, all of them was rooted on the religion of Islam. 
This we must understand And this is the creed This is the doctrine of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is saying in Quran That indeed he is the first to submit So meaning what? Even before creation of Adam Alayhi Salam, he submitted to the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala In Alam Al Arwah, in the realm of souls the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another hadith, a long hadith, whereby he states and says that نَحْنُ أَوَّلُونَ مِنَ nas That indeed, we are the last from the people. نَحْنُ أَخِرُونَ مِنَ nas We are the last from the people. وَيُبْعَثُ Indeed, we are the first to be resurrected from the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said what? That indeed his ummah, meaning you and I and those to come after, indeed we are the last amongst mankind. We are the last amongst the people. But indeed we'll be the first to be resurrected. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned and he says that oh, indeed that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to Muhammad, Idfa ra'sak ya Muhammad, raise your head, O Muhammad. Tell him to speak and it will be heard. Ishfa to shaffa, grant, give your intercession and it will be accepted. Give your intercession and it will be accepted. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa intercession will be general. Meaning everyone from his ummah. Thereafter it will be khas, specific to other individuals. This will be the intercession of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned and he says that, Oh indeed, I will be the first to enter paradise. I will be the first ana awwalu yadkhul al jannah I will be the first to enter paradise fa jaa ila al bab al jannah fa indeed I will come at the door of jannah fa yastaftaha then it will be open fa khaizin al qala then the o gatekeeper the one the officer will ask and said man anta who are you fa qala the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam muhammad that i am muhammad the man will say that oh, the person in charge of the gate of heaven will say that oh have you been sent for faqala na'am muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will say yes and for indeed he will be admitted into paradise before all of the prophets the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his precedence to enter paradise will be before all of the prophets and then the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not stop there in the hadith in the saying in his tradition he says for indeed verily my ummah will enter paradise before all ummah and you don't want to love rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you don't want to come for the maulid you don't want to come for the milad you don't want to know about muhammad Hey, what is wrong with us? What is wrong with you and I? This was his precedence that indeed he was admitted into paradise first. Indeed his ummah will be admitted into paradise قبل umam before all nations. You and I sitting here today. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in Surah Al-Ahzab verse number 6. I might be mistaken, maybe Haji will just watch the verses there as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Surah Al-Ahzab verse 6. He says, An-Nabiyu awla bil mu'mineen anfusiyam. That indeed the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is first, is number one. He is closer to the believers than their own selves. He is showing you, Allah is showing you the precedence, the lofty position of Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah says what? Surah Al-Ahzab Verse number 6 That An-Nabiyu awla bil mu'mineen anfusihim That the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Is first To the believers Than our own selves Meaning what? He will know about us He will know about our situation He will know about our states this is what this verse means. He will be closer. You think you know about yourself? And some of us, we say that, oh yeah, I know myself better than anybody else. Hey, you can lie to other people. 
You wouldn't even know yourself good too. This is the reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying what? Al-Nabiyul Awla. He is the first. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the first. And this is why, and I'll end with this hadith because I know they say only 25 minutes, you know, but alhamdulillah, you know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high is he. He says to Musa alayhi salam, Prophet Moses. You all know who is Prophet Moses? Taqaliman, he used to speak directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the person who narrated this hadith was Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala. And may Allah be pleased with Who was Abdullah ibn Abbas? Before we mention the hadith. Abdullah ibn Abbas was the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was one of the youths around the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many people when they hear the companions, when they hear sahaba, they think people who is old and elderly. No. Our own Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was more youthful people than the elderly people. Understand this. And this is why those who are elderly in this gathering, those who are viewing, you must understand to implement it amongst your youthful children today. About these gatherings. And this is why Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, he mentioned this, he says, Anna Allah ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high is he, he says, Ya Musa, O Musa, that indeed, verily, most certainly, that you must know the person who would meet me, laki yani, jahil bi muhammadin adkhaltuhu nar the one who meets me on the day of judgment, on the day of rising, on the day of resurrection, on the day of accountability, the one who would meet me and he does not know about Muhammad, I will admit him into hell. This was the words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Musa alayhi Prophet Moses, that the one who does not know about Muhammad and he meets me on the day of judgment, on the day of resurrection, meaning he is arrogant, he is not aware who was Muhammad, I will admit him into hellfire. So Musa alayhi exclaimed, he was shook up, you know, he was kept back. He says, Ya Rabbi, oh my Lord, man Muhammad, who is Muhammad? Because remember, Muhammad sallallahu was not created yet. His body was not fashioned yet. His physical attribute was not fashioned yet. So who is this person? Oh Allah, who is Muhammad? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Musa, O oh Musa, bi wa jalali by my honor and my majesty, akrama alayhi min khulkin. That indeed he is the most honorable person from my creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what to Musa, Prophet Moses? That, O oh Musa, that indeed to my majesty, to my honor, indeed from the entire creation. You all know what is the entire creation, not you and me alone, you know, and your children. Jin Kang, ants, inanimate object, everything. That the most honorable creation to me from my creation is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was his lofty precedence. Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, remember the hadith, he will be the first to intercede and his intercession will be first to be answered. But how can we attain the intercession of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that man sami anida, whosoever hears the adhan, the one calling the adhan, the muadhan who is announcing the adhan, saying Allahu Akbar four times, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala al falah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, whosoever hears the adhan and raises his hand and make a dua after adhan halat lahu shafa'ati that indeed my intercession is obligatory for that individual but when we go many masajid today after adhan we are talking we are gossiping when adhan finish no dua we don't want to raise our hands 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what? The one who makes dua after the adhan. Hallat lahu shafa'ati. That my intercession will be obligatory. It will be permissible for that individual. And this is what makes us different today. This is how we need to revamp, redefine ourselves as followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you go to the masajid of those who claim to be lovers of Rasulullah, you will see after Azan, only the Imam and two people there. People who claim to love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, people who love the milad, love the maulid. But when you go to the masjid, no one there. This is not what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa brought for us. And this is why we get attacked. Because when someone from outside of those who have the claimants of rav for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when you go to their masjid, they have two soft, two lines. If we have the proper aqidah, if we have the proper doctrine, then our lines should be filled to capacity as well for our salah. Don't just be claimants. When you hear the adhan, raise the hand for dua. And all of the pious and righteous ulama said this is the format of making dua. Dua is where your hands face to the direction of the sky. It's not just to say, Allah Rabbah hadi dawat tama, and you walk away. You pause. This is why some of the etiquette and the adab of calling the adhan as well is to stop whatever you're doing. Even if you're performing wudu, ablution. Yes. My dear esteemed and revered brothers and sisters in Islam, understand this lofty precedence of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to inculcate this in our lives. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who truly implement the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this gathering here with us. And remember, if you did not remember the lofty precedence, remember dua after adhan. Remember when you come to a gathering or like these gatherings, come closer to the person who's given the sermon. This is the way and this is the methodology. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to be cognizant of this fact. Ameen thumma ameen. Shukran jazeelan. I'll have my water. Inshallah.